God put it uh, um, as a mandate upon my heart. I believe the defining um, aspect of my ministry is going to be um, teaching marriage and relationships and God's original plan for the institution of marriage and the covenant of marriage. And so this is a unique perspective for those who are dating, for those who are engaged or married. This is a book for you. It's called, I Love You More, Most, and Forever. I believe that Victoria and I stumbled upon, um, it, it wasn't really intentional on our part, but we stumbled upon a divine pattern for marriage. And there was this little phrase we used to say to one another. I would say, I love you on the phone. You know how, how you say, no, you hang up first. No, I'll hang up first. No, you hang up first. I would say, I love you more. And she would say, I love you most. And I would say, I love you forever. And she would say, and ever and ever. <laughs> so that's the name of this book. And it reveals this three-dimensional pattern to dating. And so I begin to ask God, as I looked over our dating experience, which was so divine, and God said to me, if it was a good enough pattern, the tabernacle of Moses, for me to restore my relationship with my people, the bride of Christ, why would it not also be the biblical pattern for the second most important relationship that you will ever engage in in your entire life? And so he began to take me through the elements of the tabernacle and revealed to me uh, this blueprint for dating and marriage and how you transition through the different phases of your marriage, but also how you engage in dating as a single person. And you see the world telling us to approach it from the flesh out, but the tabernacle tells us to approach it from the spirit out. In the world, we, we seek romantic love, which is only about 100 years old. Think of how many thousands of years we've existed. Romantic love has only existed for 120 years. At the turn of the 1900s, you saw this trend of, of, of dating for romance. And that's because before then, marriage was built on need for survival. And we knew what each other brought to the table because we knew we had to bring, put a roof over the head, physically build a structure, farm land, correct? We had to uh, withhold certain roles within society based on necessity. Then we had certain roles that were based on biology. And then we have certain roles that were based on biblical principles and mandates. But from the turn of the 1900s there, all of that was done away with apart from the biblical roles and the biological roles. So those societal imposed norms for gender and marriage had to be redefined. And now we're living in the world in a world where you have all kinds of apps to date and you, you don't know where to find love. You, you think you're gonna find it at church, but then you end up on Tinder and then you look at your life and you went from per person to person, soul tie to soul tie, and you, you're, you're confused because you've done mixed your DNA with so many people and then you, you end up uh, uh, with all kinds of mental disorders because of uh, the, the fluids that were passed and the, the spiritual transmissions that took place while you were with someone out side of covenant so you have the outer court which deals with marriage in light of eternity you have the altar of sacrifice the brazen laver before you even begin dating a person you have to know and they have to know that this is going to be a sacrificial courtship you're going to lay down your life for me and I'm going to lay down my life for you just as Jesus laid down his life for the church upon the brazen altar of sacrifice, I'm going to lay down my life for you no matter what. The brazen laver, you look in the mirror. Mirror is a reflection. It's a, it's a projection of the best parts of you and the worst parts of you. What you hate about your spouse is something that God's trying to fix inside of you. Let me just go ahead and tell you the truth. Once you see marriage in light of eternity, he takes you into the inner court. There's three elements, the candelabra, the, the table of showbread, and the, 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 the altar of incense. And this deals with matters of the heart and soul. 
So in this phase of dating, you learn what their traditions are, what their family values are. That's the bread, the, the eating. This is when you first start officially dating them, right? And then you have um, an understanding of uh, their intellect and what their passions are, what their educational dreams are, what their career goals are, what their calling is about. Then you step over to the candelabra and you shine light on all the dark and messy places, uh, the places that they don't tell anybody else about because you move from I love you more to I love you most. I want to know you more than everybody else. Tell me parts about you that nobody else knows about. That's the inner court. And only the high priest can enter the most holy place. Hello, husbands. And listen to this. The female body is set up. Dr. Claxton, who has been a part of our team, taught about this in 2007, I believe. And she's writing about this as well. And we're going to partner at some point to bring even more depth of clarity to the fact that the female body is set up like a tabernacle. And woman, when a woman loses her virginity, a veil is torn from the top to the bottom. Blood and water flow and the covenant is established. I don't know if you're catching this. And that's what I'm talking about when I say forever. So this book details those three phases, right? I love you more, I love you most, I love you forever. And then when you're in marriage and you go through transitions, you have children, you take on a new career assignment, your children go off to college, you are um, going through a medical emergency, you have a loss, you have to reapproach all three phases at every transitional point. Or else you end up becoming arrogant and thinking that you know everything there is to know about that person. And then you disconnect yourself from the value of that covenant relationship.